You know, you remember Steve Mnuchin's wife? Remember she gets off that airplane and there's a picture and she's bragging about her purse and her dress and her shoes and her makeup and her hair? You know, you know, I mean, that, that woman is so disgusting for what she did. You know, so many people out here are struggling. And, and that made worldwide news because it was so embarrassing on her part to do something like that. I mean, I'm sure she married Mnuchin because of his great looks. I'm sure it had nothing to do with the money that he has. But, you know, I've never been a big Steve Mnuchin fan, another Donald Trump enabler, but that's here nor there right now. I want you to hear from Steve Mnuchin's mouth himself, the Treasury Secretary suggesting that these $1,200 stimulus tech checks should provide 10 weeks of relief for families. Have a listen to this. Be these, these checks in the mail or direct deposit, it's really bridge liquidity for people as they go through these difficult times. Bridge liquidity for about eight weeks? Well, I, I think the entire package provides economic relief overall for about 10 weeks. Are you effing kidding me? A family? You know what that breaks down to, these checks? 10 weeks? $17 a day. Find me a family with a father and a mother and kids that can live off of $17 a day when we're assuming that they're not receiving any other benefits and they have to pay rent and put food on the table. Are you kidding me? This guy is so out of touch. This is the Treasury Secretary talking like that. It's not Donald Trump. That'd be alarming enough. It's not somebody on the street. It's not a mayor. It's the Treasury Secretary. Yeah, I think he's factoring in that when, when including the unemployment checks. He as didn't well. say that, so I'm not okay, going to assume well, that he was well, factoring that in. Obviously, $17 a day if you have rent and any expense whatsoever is not going to cut it, Brian. Okay. Yeah. So you have to you have to just reasonably assume. I'm not going that, to do that. That he is factoring in no. some type of other benefit. He didn't outside, say that outside of just twelve hundred dollars no. no. for ten weeks. I'm not. I refuse to do okay. that. Well, you, you know why? You don't have to. Because, because he didn't. By, say by the way, it. the first state just opened up. Alabama will be opening up on May. On May. What a shocker! The dopes in Alabama. Uh, what a yeah, shocker! See, there's no reason. The dopes. Go. The dopes in Alabama. You, who, you by love, the way, you love to use that word. Well, dope. Hold on, I'll tell but, you why. Yeah, because I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. The people. There are a lot of people in Alabama, Brian. That are not dopes. Uh -huh. there, well, are, there, are, the people... there are some that are, but okay. you like to label the entire okay. state. Well, you like to have a couple people right. if, if I could explain label why. the entire state. If I could explain why. It was very recently that many of the politicians on the right in Alabama were the ones that wanted to send women to jail if they went to another state to get an abortion. It was those people in Alabama very recently, thank God the bill didn't pass, that wanted to ban abortion altogether. It is those good people in Alabama that did that. So, yes, I think many of the politicians in Alabama are dopes and have very low IQs. I stand by that statement. But going back to Steve Mnuchin, uh, he didn't bring up unemployment benefits. He didn't bring up anything else. So like when Trump says something dumb and Republicans want to say, well, here's what I think he meant. I refuse to do that. I can only go by what they say. And when Mnuchin made this TV appearance, he didn't mention any other money. He's the Treasury Secretary. He didn't mention unemployment. He didn't mention welfare, food stamps, nothing. He didn't mention anything else. He's specifically talking about these stimulus checks. And out of his mouth, he said a $1,200 stimulus check would provide 10 weeks of relief to families. And this is the idiot that is a policymaker in this country. And, yes, I would put him along the same lines as many of those that live in Alabama because I think Mnuchin is a dope and I think his wife is a disgusting human I being. I can tell you Mnuchin is extremely intelligent. He is a yeah, very, he very sounded smart. very intelligent. He is, in that he is sound very, clip. very smart. Mm -hmm. He is very, very accomplished. He is very, very yeah. educated. Brian. He sounded very educated in that interview. I'm not saying he sounded educated in that interview. <laughs> All right, I'm just going by that. I'm you, talking about that. You have to factor in yep. everything else that's going His on. wife seems very intelligent also. Okay, 702-257-5396 is the number call. What do you guys think about this? What do you think of our Treasury Secretary? J.D. thinks to think he's an extremely intelligent guy. I'm not going to go that far, but that's fine. Suggesting that a $1,200 stimulus check would provide 10 weeks of relief to families. That's around $17 a day. Is that an intelligent thing to say? I think not. Uh, let's take some phone calls. Again, 702 257 Five three nine six is the number to call. Let's go to James. James, you're up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, James? Hey, guys. Hello. I've been listening to this. James, are you there? Hey, We're James. having trouble hearing you, my friend. Can't hear you, man. Can you hear me okay? Now you're good. Go ahead, James. Okay. Uh, uh, a couple of quick comments. I'm a recovering addict myself, and they set up, um, for want of a better term, a conference call. So that's uh, something that people can look into if need yes. be. And uh, the other, my other issue I'm having is I work for a day labor, 
And uh, even though our, our work has been cut by 50%, they're not laying us off. And I'm finding it hard to get an answer through unemployment. So and you're saying they're I not – so, so, James – so, James, if I could just inter- inter- interject here real quickly. So the first comment you made was, you know, you're a recovering addict and you're saying you can talk to people and you, it doesn't have to be in-person meetings, but you're doing it virtually. With, but, by the way, I think that's a great idea, number one. And number two, you're saying they refuse to lay you off, and because of that, you're not able to – you're having more problems collecting unemployment, so the employer is actually saving money by not laying you off. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Exactly. Because it's a day late. It says they've uh, they around with black yeah, I hear you, James. I, I apologize. Your your phone is is uh, difficult to hear. I didn't want to cut you off there, James. I wanted to hear more of your story. Uh, you're welcome to call back later if you can get a better phone line. Maybe uh, he's got trouble paying his phone bill. <laughs> Maybe that's possible. James, I'm sorry. Times. James, I'm sorry you're going through the troubles you're going through. I really am, sir. And. Uh, Did we lose Ed? I believe Ed is gone. Again, that number to call if you want to be a part of the conversation is 702-25. Hello? Okay, Ed, go ahead. I believe we got you back. We're having some issues with the phone lines today. I apologize. Go ahead, Ed. $500 a person and $500 a child, so it would be $3,400 for a family of four. But I just had a down-the-street neighbor uh, have a heart attack because he couldn't get into his uh, wellness visit, so – uh, all the people that can't get into the doctor, dentist, I mean, they're going to die of cancer and heart disease and that sort of thing. So that's billions of people. So the people that are responsible for the shutdown are murderers. They've killed millions of people because of heart disease and uh, and uh, cancer. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, if I could just respond to that, what does that have to do with the – I'm sorry, I'm just – I'm confused. What does that have to do with the coronavirus? Because oh, you keep saying that, that we're saving lives by keeping everybody at home, and he's making an example of someone whose life was not saved because they couldn't get to their wellness visit do you and know, a heart attack at home. And a lot of that's happening in New York City. A lot of that's where? happening all over the country. So you're telling me that you know somebody, the guy we have with us on the line yeah. right now, that uh, had heart issues and he couldn't see a doctor? Is that what you're saying? Thank you very much for that response. That's exactly what he said. 702, uh, yeah. maybe, maybe he just had cardiac arrest and he couldn't go see his That's doctor. That's a great and, joke. Yeah. That's a really good joke, Brian. 702, Make another two, one, please. Seven, seven, okay, I will if you'd like me to. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. I would have liked to have gotten a response from him. Uh, next caller is Alan. Alan, you're next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Alan? Okay, Alan, you are next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? All right. We think we lost Alan. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Vegas Take right here on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM. K Don. All right. Welcome back. It is the Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro. Glad you could join us on a Friday. Having a little technical issues with the phone lines. You know, this is what happens when you're not allowed to do a radio show in a studio. Uh, we've been doing this for like a month, literally from my kitchen table, uh, for obvious reasons, because of the coronavirus. But as I mentioned, when you're doing a live show, and you're not in a radio studio, you're going to have technical issues from time to time. These things happen. But uh, for all of you that are waiting patiently on hold, we're going to get right back to you. Let me just reset everything for you. Talking about Steve Mnuchin, we're talking about this $1,200 stimulus check and he for over the course of 10 weeks, and he thinks that's enough, 10 weeks, for to relieve families. That would be $17 a day. And we're taking your phone calls, as I mentioned, at 257-5396. Let's go to John. Let's try this again. John, thanks for uh, waiting patiently on hold. What's going on, man? Hey, man, I think uh, Steve Mnuchin's a clown, uh, but but I think there's a, a very large, huge money grab going on right now in D.C., and th- that's the way you do it, is you give the peasants $1,200, and then you grab billions, uh, hundreds of billions on the backside. The New York Post, you know, a rag owned by one of the great uh, evil men of our time, Rupert Murdoch, uh, just published an article yesterday, like 43000 families are getting like 1.6 million dollars uh so i think steve mnuchin's a clown and i think uh when all said and done we're going to find out that we 
you know, pissed away three, four, five trillion dollars in this uh, with this problem. I don't disagree with you, isn't it? Doesn't it always work out the same way, John? Where the, as you said, peasants, and 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 I hate to use that term, but you're probably right. Those that are not making a lot of money and those that uh, are struggling are the ones that are going to suffer the most, while big business are the ones that are going to be bailed out. I mean, it, it seems like we we've seen this it's story before. Not a bailout, before. Brian. That's not a bailout. We've seen this you story can't, before. You cannot call this a bailout. The economy was not fundamentally flawed. Okay. The well, one, here's why I called a bailout. The, the the one industry that you could say possibly it was bailed out was the airline that's because, what i was going to talk because about because they spent so much money that anytime they got right. money from the government they put it back in their own company well here's of, why i call it themselves liquid to be able to but, but everybody else this this was like seven or eight hurricanes and we had an economist come on our show he said this was like seven or eight hurricanes hitting all over the country at once here's this, why i this, say this that. is not a bailout for these okay well here's why i disagree with you many of the big businesses besides the airlines they're getting these huge loans okay eventually they're, they're going to have to pay it back but this, this package that was $350 billion of small business is done. It's gone. And there are many of these small businesses. And do you know why that is? If I could just finish. There are many of these small businesses that now are filled out their forms. They haven't heard anything back, and they're struggling. While these huge corporations and huge companies already got their loans, and they're going to be just fine, eventually they're going to have to pay them back. I have a huge problem with that. And to me, that is like a bailout because the small businesses are struggling, and the large corporations are going to be just fine. That's because they have massive, massive overhead, Brian. But do you know why the PPP hasn't been extended? The answer literally is Nancy Pelosi. That's not the only yes, reason. Yes, it is. No, yeah, it's not. It, the it actually is. And, and why, do you, why do you think she was opposed I, to I it? I know for a fact because she, she thinks that there's not enough money going to hospitals, even though they got paid huge money in the stimulus bill, in the CARES Act. Not enough money going to minorities and not enough money going to minority and, and women-owned businesses because they don't have the relationship. Well, she's right. Them. I agree with her 150%. So, so that means we should cut off the entire program? She doesn't want to cut off the entire yes, program. Yes, she does, she wants Brian. To add, no, no, yes, she does. You're not yeah, actually accurate. No, she not, wants to add on to the program. No, she doesn't. She wants the, the program. The deal has been has been All right. put on the table. Uh, I will and show she wants, you. She wants the deal to change towards her favor. Otherwise, she is going to let okay. all these small businesses. And do you know how hard it is to be a small business owner, Brian? You talk about being depressed. You talk about having a small business, having that business go under after working your, you know, I'll say your ass off for 10 or 15 years to build a brand, and suddenly, to, due to no fault of your own, that business goes under. Do you know how psychologically damaging that can be to somebody? Well, you're making the case for me. It's the big businesses that are no, not I, struggling, and it's the small I, businesn- I'm that saying, struggling. I, 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 that was my I'm point. Saying entre- start- I'm saying there's a lot of entrepreneurs across the country that if their businesses go down, yep. They don't have college degrees to back on. They don't have no to, to fall back on. They don't have other things that they're doing. They literally are impoverished at that point. Everything they worked for 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 decades, for, in some cases, is gone. Is is gone for nothing. And so that's why this two hundred fifty billion dollars is so important. This this extension of the PPP is so important. And Nancy Pelosi needs to pass it. Okay. Uh, I mean, I completely disagree. With of course, you. It's you not will. just Nancy it's Pelosi, just, but well, let's get no, back Brian, to the phone calls. I promise you, it is Nancy okay. Pelosi. Okay. I get your opinion. I just completely disagree with you. Let's let's get back to the phone call. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Andre. Andre, you're next on the Vegas Take. Hey, what's up, Andre? What up, what up, JD? What up, Brian? Hey, um, of course, it's Nancy Pelosi. Ain't no question about it. But, you know, it's easy for Brian to say he disagrees. So what do you disagree? The fact of the fact is that it is Nancy Pelosi. But it's typical Democratic playbook, just like uh, – J.D., I don't know if you remember the tweet that Diane Feinstein put out from California, who's been there over 40 years, a career politician. She put out a tweet where she was telling Donald Trump to basically send Iran more money so they could combat their crisis of corona, uh, the virus. Yeah, okay? that was crazy. And then at the same at the same time, California just gave... Yeah, just right. gave 125 million dollars right. to to undocumented yeah, go, go. Uh, undocumented immigrants in their city. Right. They more, just more, gave they, more, they just more, gave more, them 500 dollars each. More more concern. With I can't the, hear you, Andre. I'm sorry. What would you say? More, more more concern with the Iranian people than the American people and what okay. they're going through right Andre, now. Andre, do you blame? Uh, Iran. All right, all right, fair enough. Andre, do you okay. blame Democrats for the coronavirus? I don't blame anybody. I think you know who I blame. I blame where, where the blame should be put at. I think it's China. I don't think this mm, is yeah. that. I don't. I think it was right. on purpose. And okay, uh, fair, that's – okay, okay. Well, I agree with you on that one, but uh, what I you, uh, don't if don't I could just finish and talk to the caller. Uh, what do you think about Sisolak? Uh, do you think Sisolak did the right thing by closing down the strip, or, or would you like to criticize him also? No, I think, I, I, I think you know, things needed to be shut down as a precautionary uh, caution. You know, I think, I think it's common sense, right? There's no need to blame uh, Sisolak for that. Now, what we will blame him for is the amount of time that he does extend this for. I because agree. At, 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 okay. at the same token, just like you were holding Trump accountable for his reaction to the crisis, we're going to hold Sisolak accountable. And what has he done wrong? And what has he done wrong? And what has he done wrong? Criticize. What has he done wrong? 
except for that medication that he is banning for the most part. That he didn't ban it. You're 100 percent. Excuse me. You're 100 percent wrong. He didn't ban it. Doctors are allowed to prescribe the medication. Right. Well, That's a right wing talking point. He's whoring it. How about that? No, he's not. You're absolutely wrong. He is allowing okay. doctors to prescribe, and you are ill-informed because you're watching Fox News. Uh, you are uh, ill-informed, sir. Of course. I, I, of no, course. not of course. You, you, you just, just said you're, something you're that is not factually informed. accurate. You're the most informed and more knowledgeable. Really? Name me one. Okay, that's okay that's so name me right. one thing. Okay, let's go with that. Name me one thing that I've said in this show that is not factually accurate. I go. Don't, I haven't listened to you in a while. Yeah, man. exactly. That's then get lost. Exactly. Then get lost. Get lost. Yeah, get lost. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Very good call. Bye bye. And actually, I will say this: he is not. He has not banned it. Hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin is being. It, it's uh -huh. the first. It's the first line for anyone who goes to the hospital for COVID in, uh -huh. in Nevada right now. I want to just with, go with, by. With a lot of hospitals. I, and, and I don't you, wanna... you say, uh huh. No, that, that's that's true, Brian. Well, because I, I don't want to get another debate with you on these drugs. Uh, I'm, I not, think it's ridiculous. I'm not getting a debate with you. I'm just I, telling I you. I'm, I'm telling it. you that's cool. Well, uh, just because you don't want to means I can't. Go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. Go well, ahead. I'm just saying. Go ahead. He has not banned it. So Andre is. I was actually agreeing with you, but you're so defensive. That once I'm, I open my mouth, you assume that, that, no, I, that, that I'm attacking guy, you. Well, you know, you get one caller that disagrees with you, and you want me to hang up on them immediately. I get 30 of That's them, and I want, a chance, I want a chance to respond to him. He just called up and just attacked me and basically said, you know, I get everything wrong, and I'm unfactual and, and you know, ill-informed. And I, and I say to the caller, name me one thing that I've said in this show that is not factually accurate, and his idiotic, ignorant response is, well, I can't think of one. I'm sorry. That, that's why I'm fired up, J.D. When people call into the show and they want to call me names or they want to say I'm not factual and I ask them a very fair and specific question and they can't answer, they're idiots. They're ignorant. And that's why I'm fired up right now. I'm addressing that last caller who once again, another idiot who calls in who wants to you know, call me a Democrat, which I'm not, wants to say I'm ill-informed, which I'm not, and I give him an opportunity. I don't hang up on him. I give him an opportunity to give me something I said that would lead him to believe that I'm ill-informed, not factually accurate. And his dumb response is, oh, I don't know. I haven't listened in a long time. Good, good. Great answer, buddy. You sound like a really smart guy. Great answer. 702. That's why I'm fired up. 702-257-5396. That and you have no weekend plans. Well, that, that's, also, that's also a part of it. You're right. He's got a Sunday plan. You're right. I'm fired up today. I'm getting pissed off with this coronavirus stuff. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Fernando, you're next on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Fernando? Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, if you I'm guys great. get a chance, read a book called Eyes of the Darkness by Dean Koontz, the famous writer Dean Koontz. And he wrote in 1981 that China and their labs were developing a virus back then. And they said they would release it in 2020. It's called Wuhan 400. Okay, and um, if you guys get a chance, take a look at that, okay? Uh, I'll do it. Fernando, how are you holding up uh, uh, in all this nonsense? How are you doing? I'm holding up okay. I'm over here yeah. in um, Ghost Town, Sun City, Summerlin. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's more quieter than ever. You can hear all the animals. You can hear the squirrels and the crickets and everything. But uh, I'm doing okay. I hear the animals too in my complex. It's usually people having sex, but uh, <laughs> but I, I'm willing to I'm willing to get through it. Fernando, I, 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 keep yourself safe, my friend. Okay, stay safe. Okay, right? you safe. Have a good weekend. Bye -bye. Thank you. Yeah, Thank thanks you. a lot, Fernando. Thank you, Fernando. And then we'll check out that books. Now I got two books I got to read. It's like a homework assignment. <laughs> but Dean Koontz writes fiction, though. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He but just, he's just saying it's inter interesting. He, he just got he just got lucky, and we can. And his I, books I, are very. I, I can get into the. The whole China situation, we haven't talked about it at all. Oh, we then. will. Yeah. Well, we have a new books, segment we're debuting. I, I yeah, we are. Talk about we are. That a his, bit. By the way, his books are very similar to Donald Trump's press conferences. They're, they're all fiction. 702-257-5396, the number to call. You're going to have your chance, J.D. We have a very fun segment coming up. It's oh. called The China Report with J.D. Sharp. The China Report, yeah, huh? Yeah. You're going to have your moment to shine. Don't okay. worry. Okay. No, I'm just saying, regardless. Am I, I a little crazy today? I, I, actually, I actually wouldn't. You, you, are, you are a bit out of control today. <laughs> a little bit I'm, unglued. I'm a little unglued. I like that. A little off the rails. Well, I apologize. Honestly, your your chest is is not even salmon today, which is odd. So there's there's something there's something <laughs> that wrong. That wasn't that wasn't very nice, but I guess I deserve that. No, I'm serious. The chest is changing colors like a it mood is. ring. Seven zero two two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to Mike. Mike, you're, I get fired up when people call in and then they can't come up hey, with I one like example, it. man. Uh, I'm, I'm with what it. What do you want me to do? Uh, let's go to Mike. Mike, you're next up on the Vegas take. Hey, what's up, Mike? All right, gentlemen, how you doing? I um, uh, just first admit this is the second day ever hearing you guys. You guys are quite comical. But well, let me tell you something about myself. First of all, 18 years on the farm taught me accountability. Six years in the United States Navy taught me Thank you for your service, sir. We appreciate you. For a lifetime with God taught me to be trustworthy. I'm a small business owner. 
I have 12 employees, just hired two more. I am in construction. I'm still up and running. I learned value as a young adult. I saved my money up for rainy days. My business, if I had to shut it down, I would still pay my employees for two years. Here's the next thing. Everybody does not receive, does not have to receive $1,200. It should have went on unemployment. I'm still working. I don't need $1,200. I'm donating that to some Mike, of the families I, I know that need it. No, let me finish. Mike. Your math is also wrong, son, because... Okay, well, I'm not your son. I'm not your son, and uh, you don't tell me when I can't talk. And I was gladly going to keep you on the line, but uh, you know, if you're not going to allow me to respond to the obviously, he said, obviously, he's not. He was he was in the middle of a very very solid tangent. Okay, well, well we have other people on hold, and I, I, we have other people. I, Mike, we need to I, I really get to. appreciated your tangent. And what I was going to try to tell Mike, if he could, if he could. All right. Well, if you can listen, Mike, instead of talking, you sound like the attorney general. If you could actually, <laughs> with all due respect, uh, what I was going to say was, and I was going to actually compliment you, that not everybody in this country is as responsible as you are. Not everybody in this country can save money like you've saved. Not everybody has been good with their finances like you have been. So while I'm glad to hear from people like you that are successful, that have hired people, and that have enough money to pay others, some people are not smart enough to do that, and others are just selfish, like Tillman Fertitta, who laid off a bunch of his own workers. He's worth billions of dollars. He's not continuing to pay them. That is what I was going to – I was trying to compliment you, sir. That's what I was trying to do. All right. Do we have time for a few more calls? Yeah, thanks for the call, Mike. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Anthony real quick. Anthony, i got about one minute for you, my friend. Go. Hey, what's up, Anthony? Hey, guys. How you doing? I've been watching all this happen well. now. Uh, you know, I'll be, you know, yes, I'm a liberal, but watching this happen makes me really appreciate George W. Bush and how he had a foresight. You know, uh, H1N1 happened in, what, 2007? Uh, he was able to call yes. in then candidate Barack Obama, who put a plan together, and after 60 million people were infected, you know, we had 12,000 die, but we had a plan together. And then that plan led to Ebola, right? So our plan was, was together with Ebola. We only lost two people. I think that now, uh, I'm hoping that Trump gets his act together. I think he's getting it together now. So I think that we can get through this as a, as a, as a, as a country. Again, I have a business. I specialize in infectious disease. Uh, please, everyone, please, 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 your immune system is the only fight for this right now. It's a, it's a disease with no cure, no treatment, you know. So because there's no treatment and no cure, your immune system is the best way to fight this disease right now. Please uh, strengthen your immune system. Every Nevada. That's the only uh, defense we have right now. And I want Anthony, to that's out. great advice. Yep. That's Thank great you. advice. Which means Anthony. do not be at home drinking alcohol every single day. Well, that's probably, not, probably it, not a good idea. No, a lot of people are doing that right now, Brian. Yeah. Alcohol sales are up 28% across the entire country. What do you think that number is here in Nevada where you have 400,000 people unemployed? I, I have no idea. <laughs> but it, I, I have no idea. But uh, what I will say is that Anthony's right. You know, Our immune system is the best way we can fight this uh, besides being in quarantine and, and, and taking the proper steps, obviously. And uh, Anthony makes a very good point. Uh, Anthony, we're glad you're doing well. Please stay safe, my friend. And uh, we have a very interesting and informative guest coming up next, and we always love it when she yeah, comes thanks on. Thanks for calling, Anthony. Uh, we have Congresswoman Dina Titus, Nevada Congresswoman, coming up next. I'm going to ask her what are her thoughts on the difference of opinion between the mayor of Las Vegas and the governor, Steve Sislock. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back right after this Vegas take on 101.5 FM, 720 AM, K Dawn.